First time recording, guys. Harold, what's up, Harold? What's up? What's up? All right, let's get started. Oh, hell yeah. I like it. You guys are making me happy right now, guys. 10, 15, 20. Everybody. And yeah. who's, I don't know who's, I don't see Irvin online, but hey, we got you. <laughs> it, it, it would help. It would help out. <laughs> Huh? I'm like, oh, I'm like, I know, I know, I know. It's like me texting, like what I think about texting, like, dude, why don't you? <laughs> I'm looking at, I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, yeah, jump online, guys. It just helps out the whole thing. All right. It makes me look good, to be honest with All you. Right. All right, it makes me look real good. <laughs> All right, we're ready. Let's jump. Let's, let's jump. So, welcome, guys. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day on a Wednesday at 11:30 to jump on this training with Blanca and I. Uh, like I said in the in the text message, uh, just Blanca alone, uh, uh, Blanca and I alone have about over 30 years of experience in real estate. This is what we do to feed our families. This is what we do. Hold on real quick. Thank you. This is what we do, guys. Uh, what we've been doing at least now for over 15 years plus, right? So we, we bring a lot of experience. We have most likely ran a lot uh, into a lot more scenarios than a lot of you guys. So it's a really, really great benefit um, for you guys to ask us questions so that we can help you guys further along in your, in, in your real estate careers, all right? So thanks, guys. Yeah. So um, today, guys, what we want to train on is a life scenario um, that Rob had on his listing. And the reason we want to train on this is because a lot of us are working with buyers. It's a competitive market. Um, sometimes we read the private remarks and we just go about that and don't push the extra step. We want you guys to push a little bit more right now. And we're going to give you a reason why on how that benefits you with your clients to positioning them and getting their offers accepted. And also thinking outside of the box. We're in a market where we need to get creative with our offers. Right now, the zero contingencies, 20 plus percent um, down payment and early close, 5% deposit is not cutting it. We're needing to get a little more creative on rent backs, offering maybe moving services, treating the listing agents to a day spa. I mean, thinking outside of the box to really connect guys and sprucing up these offers. So Rob's going to really dive into his experience with his listing on Spumante in Gilroy and how basically the buyer made Rob perform. But that's basically what it was. The buyer made the listing agent perform and moves quicker on that listing. Okay. So guys, before we jump into it, there's a, there's a couple mm -hmm. of mindsets, things that we want to, I want you guys to think about as agents, right? It's, it's just as human beings, right? Is that we're so focused on looking at the road down that we sometimes forget to look up, but most importantly, we forget to look back, right? And, and what happens when I say that is, is we're so busy on doing the day-to-day -day things. We collect a check, we're excited, and we move on to the next that we never take time to really, to really, um, we never really take time to figure out, well, shit, how did I get that paycheck? Like what really had to happen, right? So as I've gone in my career, I've noticed myself looking back, right? Because I, I, I say it a lot, guys, that I'm a lazy guy, but lazy might be the wrong word. I'm an efficient guy. I try to figure out ways to be a lot more efficient with, with, with the work that I'm doing. So as I was looking back in Spumante and was trying to figure out how I can do things better, I started noticing like, shit, this guy made me do things that I would not have done in the past. And then I'm started thinking, well, why aren't we doing it? So I kind of wanted to have more of a conversation with you guys. That's the reason why I wanted my senior agents to be on here, because this is going to pertain a lot more to the people that are actually submitting offers. So if I call on you guys or if I ask questions, I'm going to need some participation from you guys because it's going to help out the group as a whole. All right. So real quick, guys, let's unmute yourself. Oh, they see that? Can they see that, Emmanuel? Uh, yeah. The one on the MLS. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, uh, the no, MLS. But system. we want the M MLS. But let, let me let me before shot. before we screenshot that. Let me let me let me chat real quick a little bit. Oh. Um. So guys, really quick, like I want to know from you guys in regards to when you guys call listing agents. Now, now, I haven't done a buyer in, in a long time, guys. Right. I'm still in the trenches with you guys, but I'm I've been primarily focusing on listings. I, I you know, I have three, four listings popping up. So uh, and you have a buyer's agent that's a great buyer's agent right next to me. So 
help me out guys. Like when you guys as buyer agents are calling listing agents, what is it that you guys are asking? Give me something. Let's just go around the room really quick and let me figure out like what you guys are saying, because I hear a lot of phone calls because I'm on the listing side. So I get to hear a lot of uh, buyers give me a call and they tell me certain things. So let's talk about it. What, what, what are some things that you guys ask listing agents that you guys feel is important? How many disclosures have been pulled? Okay. Um, how many offers they expecting? If the sellers are looking for anything special, if they can give us a number on what the sellers are wanting, uh, generally like how they do business, are they going to be countering? Um, yeah, I mean, that's usually what okay. I try to get. Well, that's a good start, right? Everything, all that stuff is good. How many offers do you have in hand? When are you planning to look at offers? What comps you're looking at? Now, how can, how can we make it smoother for the sellers? How can we make it smoother for the sellers? Let me ask you this. What if, what if I were to tell you guys as a listing agent and hearing those questions that those questions are really kind of not that great, right? And, and, and listen, guys, we're all, we're, it's a learning experience. And I kind of want to flip this upside down right? Because I want you guys to think about it. Does it really matter if there's two offers on a house or if there's 10 offers in a house? Does it really matter? No. No. Does it really matter how many disclosure packets out if there was two disclosure packets out or there was a hundred disclosure packets out? No. Does it really matter what, uh, what the comps, the seller's uh, agent is looking at? No. Right now, you guys have the same amount of power that uh, 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 you guys have the same, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Right now, the listing agent has the most power between a buying agent and a selling agent, okay? So uh, would it be fair to say that? AJ, would it be fair to say that the listing agent has more power than the, than the buying agent right now? Right now, I mean, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, generally, I guess, yes. I mean, I'm the guy that knows the price. I'm the guy that sees everyone's offers. I'm the guy that has a direct connection with the seller. I'm the, I'm the guy who's advising the seller on what to do. I would say that I have the most power between the buying agent and the seller in today's market, okay? Now, the question is, here's my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you guys a quick little saying that I, I learned from Jason a long time ago that I repeat myself and, I, and I, it was probably during a drunken moment at like two o'clock in the morning at three o'clock in the morning that we talked about this. Control what you could control, okay? Now, I can't control what the, what the other agents are going to bring into the table. I can't control, uh, um, you know, how they think. I can't control what other people are, uh, how other people are going to submit an offer or if they're going to submit an offer. What I can control is I can control my own actions, right? So now, whenever, whenever we submit offers right now, and I'm looking at everybody as a mass, the questions that we're asking is, are you willing to send in a preemptive offer? Are you willing to look at preemptive offers? And the next question is, when are offer due dates due, right? Now, if you submit an offer right now on the offer due date, are the chances great that you're going to be competing with more than just yourself? Yes, absolutely. What's an average number that we're competing with right now? 10. 10, 10 offers. 40. 40 offers. If you send in a preemptive offer, right? A preemptive offer ahead of schedule, how many, how many offers are you competing in at that point? Zero. 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 Maybe one, because someone's pretty much savvy to what I'm thinking about doing now, right? So here's what I'm proposing is, well, let me now go back to the story now that, that happened with Spumante. Spumante, I told the guy, no preemptive offers. The guy still sent me a preemptive offer, <laughs> right? He did, every, he did the exact opposite I told him not to do. But you know what he didn't do? He didn't waste my freaking time by sending me a sorry ass offer. He sent me an offer that I had to present because I looked at it and I was like, holy shit, this is a good offer, right? So he made me go back to the sellers. I had to present that offer to my seller and my sellers fell in love with that offer and accepted the offer. Now, let me explain what he did because again, I'm a firm believer of control what you can control, okay? So let me, let me, let me tell you what he did. He was the first guy at our open house. The moment that that house hit the market, he was at that house one hour within that one hour period with his buyer, okay? Now, I'm not saying don't, to be there within that one hour. What I am saying there is you want to get there as fast as you, pay, as you can. The second thing that he did was he submitted an offer right after that. No, he called you. No, no. Make yourself known. No, no, he called me before. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, okay. So let's go back. So he called me before to tell me that he was going to go look at the house, mm -hmm. but he did not ask me about nothing. No, nothing else, 
right? He goes out to the house within that one hour that the, it was on the market. And then within probably the hour after that, he ends up sending me an offer. Now, here's the thing is that sometimes, sometimes we don't think as listing agents, I'm coasting that first day, second day, there's nothing really for me to do for the listing, for the listing, right? We really don't have a first open house till Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? So that first day, there was nothing really on my mind about that listing. That guy put me on my toes and said, hey, listen, Rob, this is what he told me. So when I told him, I go, hey, man, no preemptive offers. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be selfish, guys, right? Why am I trying to be selfish as a listing agent? The reason why I'm trying to be selfish with the listing agent, guys, is because the only promotion that I have is that property to promote myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to milk the shit I, out of I can out of that listing there. So it is in my benefit to take that house to the, to the open house, to a Saturday and Sunday open house, because I can promote myself as a big dog as a listing agent, right? I can meet and shake hands with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. It allows me an opportunity to promote my, my flyers and have people know who I am to get more business. This guy took me out. This guy took me out of the game, right? And he took me out of the game because he was fast, right? He, he sent me an amazing offer, right? And I had to perform. His exact words was like, here's the offer, Rob. What are you going to do with it now? No preemptive offers. Like, well, well, okay, Rob, okay, shit, totally understand. What are you going to do with my offer now? What are you going to do with it, right? So I'm forced to do something. I'm forced now to go back to my cell. Like, oh, I'm going to back to do it. You know what I mean? And, I'm, and I know it's a great offer. I know they're going to like it, but he forced me to go do it. I even lagged on accepting his offer because I was trying to milk the listing as much as I could, right? But, but again, he put me in a position that, that I didn't like to be in a position in right? He cut me down. Another purpose of why I want it is chances are I'm probably could double end that deal. That's a possible $4 million deal for me, mm -hmm. right? Now, again, who has the most power in this position? I have the most power. The listing agent has the most power. If I have somebody just randomly walk up and says, hey, Robert, I want this house and I want you to be my agent, I cut you guys down automatically. Pop, 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 all 10 offers, right? Granted, if I have a great, if I have a great buyer that comes to me, right? But now it's going to be your job to cut all those opportunities that I can have. And how do you guys cut those opportunities is by going in there and showing these houses sooner than later. Now, the question is, how are we going to do it, right? Here's my thought process. And here's where I need my senior agents to uh, fight me on it. Let's, let's figure out reasons of, of, of why we're not going to win. So my, my, what I propose is I don't really give a shit if there's a preemptive offer uh, uh, due date on the home. I really don't care now. Well, what was offer his, offer? What was his offer was 1850 with a free 60 day uh, rent back. 20, uh, no, like, it was like 50% down. They had a million in change in the bank. Okay. Close of escrow was 21 days. Everything signed, everything was ready to go. So, 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 so that's, that's a good thing right there. Look at guys, look at guys, look at guys. I want you to understand, control what you can control. If you're going to memorize anything, memorize that. That has changed my life, right? It, it, it allows me to blame myself instead of blame someone else, right? Control what you can control. In this case, I can control making a video. I can control sending a text message. I can control keeping in touch with the agent. I can control the offer price. I can control, there's a lot of things that I can control. If you can control everything on your part, then you, you should be able to sleep at night because everything was out of your control. You can't, you have no control of that. Let me chime in real quick. Go for it. I just want to say something before Rob gets off of the topic is the buyer's agent in this scenario, guys, going to what you can control. If you're going to present a preemptive offer, that was a hell of an offer as far as down payment, as far as price, as far as negotiating the rent back terms and everything signed up front and submitted what was the listing agent going to think about versus you're submitting a preemptive kind of half-assed, not strong and not, you know, including everything. That's a full package. The buyer acknowledged, reviewed all the disclosures, signed off on it. It's complete. Basically he has everything signed and acknowledged. So there the buyer, what you said, what he could control, he went home you know, submitted his offer, complete as can be, he has nothing to worry about. Now, if the seller doesn't accept it or the listing agent doesn't advise the seller, then that's on them. But from his perspective, representing the buyer, everything's in. 
There's nothing that he left out, basically. You, you could sleep at night, right? It's a very good feeling. Here's the part that, because listen, guys, I'm in the trenches with you guys, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not management where I'm, where I'm barking orders and telling you guys what to do. I'm doing the same exact thing that you guys are doing, right? So the hardest part that I've seen is when we're all, when all 20 people are fighting over a house and that the, the, you hate that freaking phone call making to your client saying, we did not get accepted, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't get accepted. That, that, that is to me like the worst freaking call. And what sucks about it is that I can't control any of that stuff, mm -hmm. right? So now hear me out, guys, because I've thought about this, right? So what if we do this, guys? What if on the Monday, when, well, let's say, for example, the, the moment that the house jumps onto the market, we show the house, we submit the property. I mean, we submit an offer ASAP, right? You put an offer deadline on that. Now, this is what's going to happen. This is what the agent did, right? I don't, and honestly, I don't know if, he, if this was his plan or if he was trying to, if he knew what he was doing. I don't know, but I thought about it. And, and this is what, what I think now. How many times, let me ask, uh, Z, are you there? You there, Z? No. Yeah, I'm here. Can I ask you a question? Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, Z, how many times can you submit on a house, an offer on a house? Unlimited. Unlimited times. You can submit unlimited times. If you submit an offer on a, on a day that the, that the due date is due, how many chances do you have? One. You have one chance at a home. Now, hear me out. Let's just say, for example, Derek's, the agent's name was Derek. Derek gave it to me the first day on a Monday. I had offers due date Tuesday, Wednesday of the following week. Okay. Hear me out. What if I come back to him and I said, hey, listen, the sellers decided not to move forward with you. They're going to end up uh, 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 waiting for the offer due date. What does that mean? What is that an indication to you guys? Yeah. What is it? You guys agree that the offer isn't strong enough? Something. Something was missing. Something was missing. Offer wasn't strong enough. There was something with that offer that did, did not emotionally move the, the sellers to make a move and accept your offer. The sellers are expecting that. They're expecting something. Well, also, you know, you need to look read the sellers as well. Depend on what kind of seller, right? If you look, uh, take a look into the prelims, it's an LLC investor. Uh -huh. What investor looking for? Money. Money. Terms. Money. Close. If you is is a trust, most likely they're gonna get it done. Uh, someone that clean offer, someone that you know come in, uh, quick close, make the life of the listing agent easier. I got a couple of things. Yes. So now, 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 listen. There was there was a there's a reason, right? Why your offer didn't get accepted? It wasn't moving enough, for whatever reason, right? Uh, uh, Z, let me ask you this. If, if, if I submit it on a Monday and offers are due on the following Tuesday, can I resubmit the offer again? Yep. Of course, right? Of course you can. So now when I look at all of us as a whole, and I'm including myself as well, right? When I look at ourselves and we're all asking the question, is there preemptive offers and when are offer due dates due? Right? Say, boring questions, guys. As a listing agent, I hate those questions because they're it's everybody's questions, right? And then I'm thinking, then I'm thinking, Okay, well, now you are controlling, you're not controlling yourself at that point. At that point, you have no control over the transaction. At that point, I have full control. I'm, I'm rounding all you guys up. And I said, okay, let's see. And I'm going to pick one, uh, one or two that I'm going to entertain, right? But in this case, why don't we control what we can control? Why don't we go ahead and send in preemptive offers? Let's get our, our buyers out there. Let's get them to write sooner than later. And let's, let's play the game. Here's another question that annoys me, right? Is the offer is 1.4? Are they 1.5? Oh, is it less than 1.6? Is it higher than 1.15? I, I, I hate those going back and forth questions, right? So why just, not why not do it as an offer? Just ask, ask direct. Uh, you ask direct is one thing, right? Yeah, just ask direct. What is gonna what number is gonna get your seller to move forward? Now just ask it. Now, 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 guys, the other way is why not just submit the freaking offer? Submit the offer. If they don't get accepted, if you don't, or if your preemptive offer does not get accepted, what does that mean? Most long is not strong enough, right? So then push the number up again, mm -hmm. right? Or you can prep your buyers, ask them what the maximum they're going to pay for the house. Yeah. 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 That was really good, Tony. Tony just said, ask your buyer, what is your max? Are you in love with this home? Are you ready to go your max? Why do you want to wait for the offer due date to compete with much more offers and many more buyers? Let's just go your highest, your best, and we'll sh submit. So I think the conversations nowadays in today's market need to be, 
let's submit preemptive. Let's not wait for the offer due date. They called Rob and Rob said no preemptives. The agent went around it. If you're submitting a full package and you know your offer is complete, it's worth the shot in this market. And then the listing agent has to show to the sellers the due diligence anyway. I have yes. to. I have to. I yes. have to show. I have to show it. This whole thing about a preemptive offer was make believe, guys. We made that up. Yeah. We made that up. Us lazy agents made that up. Rem right. Remember that, guys. An offer needs to be submitted to the seller. The listing agent has a due diligence to present whatever offers come in. And they have to send you sign rejection. And yes. they have to sign. So that's the other part of the formula, right? Is that if you're going to send a preemptive offer right off the bat, make sure that you get the, the signature from the seller that they that they saw the offer in hand, right? And then at that point, start playing the numbers up and, and start going from there. If you're going to send in a preemptive offer, make sure I call it a wow number, guys, right? And, and, and for those that are sitting in front of these clients and selling these, 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 uh, these offers, like you need to be straight up with their clients. All right. You need to let them know, like, first off, you don't let them know the strategy. And the second off is say, Hey, listen, Mr. Customer, if we're going to submit, if we're going to have any chance at sending a preemptive offer, we're going to have to send in what I call Mr. Customer, a wow number. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about what a wow number is, mm -hmm. right? A wow number is not list price. That's not a wow number, Mr. Customer, right? You have to remember that I have this offer here has to be so intriguing enough that the sellers are forced to take the market, the home off the market because it's so effing great, right? Uh, you need to check with the listing agent to find out when they can meet up with the seller. Yes, that's that's good. So that, that's part of the Otherwise, formula. You know, if you submit in and the seller elsewhere, they cannot reach out. That is key. Learn from the, the offer which you get uh, accept uh, two weeks ago, right, Anna? With, uh, yeah. yeah. So we submit. And we we asked only like four hours yeah. to return. They said you have to present it. Yeah. You, after your open house, you have to meet up with the seller. Yep. And they said they said they're gonna meet up with the seller right after that evening. We sent in and we we said that you know the time the deadline is five o'clock, but you know we we can you know yeah we can make that. we can play around with that. So so that is right, guys. Again, control what you can control. Know exactly when they're gonna end up doing it. If they know if you know that the that the that the clients are in the Caribbeans. And they're not going to be around for some time. Well, then you need that, that's something you need to know. Or right? if it's in a trust, a trust oh, no. means there's multiple parties, guys. Not all the trust members are under one household. Keep in mind, a trust is a family home. There may be different trustees that need to make the decision. That's probably going to require a little more time. The LLC that Tony talked about as well. There may be different partners. Uh, another thing that's really important, guys, is if in the notes, it's already stating all disclosures to be signed, you better forget about that conversation that I have a TC that specializes in signing all the disclosures and making sure nothing is missed. Have your buyer sign all disclosures. It is going to be upfront work. It's probably a hassle and a headache. But if you want to stand out and you want your offer to be complete, you got to do what you got to do. If it's already there, that's a plus. She's re they're receiving your offer. You already have all the disclosures signed. And then you avoid that conversation. Send me the signed disclosures. And then you saying, I have a TC who specializes in that. That's going to make sure that everything is signed and not missed. She's like, okay, whatever. I don't give a, you no. know, whatever. Like hey, it's, I'll, you know, I'll so. Thirty minutes to an hour of my time to make sure. What if there's yeah. another offer that came in and but has everything complete? They're in the running now, yeah. just because you didn't send the signed disclosures. We're in a market where we're having to do a little more legwork right now. If you don't know, get a help from a senior agent. The senior agent will make sure that you're covering all the signatures that need to be done. I'm proposing, guys, that we send in more preemptive offers. I'm, I'm, I'm proposing guys that we forget about some of these crappy questions that we're so used to and programmed to asking the listing agent. It bores me. I want to shoot myself. Okay. okay. So, I have a the, the agents that are saying like, oh, I'm not even going to open the offers until the due date, like per the seller's request, they don't even want to see offers. Is that true that they can do that? No, that's not true. That's being a lazy agent. He's controlling the, the situation. He's controlling the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. There's that's a lot of or like the seller requested not to even see any offers until the due date. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't, listen, it, there's an, there's an offer that's in the table, right? Let's just say, for example, the house is worth $3 million, right? Uh, the house is listed for $3 million and I'm going to exaggerate the numbers. You submitted an offer for 4 million, right? But it had an offer due date 
of two day of uh, of uh, of twenty four hours. You're telling me you're telling me that the that the uh, that the listing agent will pass that up because it's being lazy because the sellers decided to not look at that. It is not in the benefit of the of the of the sellers to not look at a, of an offer like that, mm-hmm. right? But it's also our job to really relay that over to you guys, relay over to the listing agent. Hey, listen, uh, lazy ass, you have an amazing offer in front of you, right? Just do me a favor, just open it up. If it's not amazing to you, then let me know it's not amazing to you. Now I know that it's not amazing, so I have another chance to resubmit the offer again, right? So, but we have to now start putting the pressure a little bit more on the listing agents because the listing agents are coasting. I am coasting, guys. I'm coasting. I'm to me, the only the, the whenever there's a house that's on the market that I'm listing, guess who for sure is going to get paid? I am the listing agent. You guys don't know. You guys, you guys are still crossing your fingers if you guys are going to get paid or not. Mm-hmm. So why don't you guys push a little bit more? Let's control. Let's have you guys control the narrative a little, a little bit more than what we're doing right now by just submitting the offer and then hoping and praying out of 20 people that you guys stand out, right? right. Did he do the 24 hours he did? On he did. On he, did the, he did. And not only that, if I show you the text messages, it's, I'm, I'm embarrassed if I show you guys the text message of what happened because I'm trying to, I'm trying to push it off. Now we need to know. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I, l- listen, so, so, so the text messages was, I, I ignored the offer. I ignored the offer. Right. And he goes, Hey Rob, I just want you straight up. He was, he was, a, I, I don't, he didn't seem like he was annoyed, but he was just doing his job. Right. He goes, Hey Robert, I want to know, even if you just got my offer, that's what he told me. Right. And then I got it and I saw it and I know it was great. I didn't want to present it because the moment I respond, I have to, we now have to entertain it. Right. So I'm trying to hold off to try to see if anything else comes in. Right. And then he goes, he sends me another message. He goes, Robert, just tell me if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. That's what he told me. He goes, hey, it's cool, Robert. Don't worry. If, it, if it's not a good, if it's not acceptable for the sellers, then we'll just move on. And that word, it's cool. What do you yeah. guys think he was feeling? It was feeling pressure. He No, no. And <laughs> that, just, just, Rob was feeling pressure. Oh, I was feeling pressure. Rob was feeling pressure. That agent was in control. Yeah. I'm not worried, Rob. Yeah. It's cool. Was it on you, Rob. Yeah, he was putting it on me. It, that he, right there is the power of the takeaway. Yes. Right? Yes. Power, I always say the power of the takeaway is like the hey, it's fine. If you don't like it, whatever, I'll walk away. Right? Okay. Like like he was that. confident. He knew he had his things together. He knew he had a strong offer. No, no, he, he wasn't worried. He also knew that he was the only offer. If you if you if you send in an offer 2 hours after it was listed, what other offer do you have on the table, Rob? What, what else do you got to do, Rob? You mean, what else do you have to do? You got so many offers, right? That you can't, that you're so flooded. Your inbox is so flooded that you can't show, a, you can't show this one offer to your client. Like, think about, think about, think about how he was able to cut me down. And I'm thinking about it because I'm pissed. I'm pissed. <laughs> I was pissed, right? Because I was going to double in this deal. I had, I had a way to make this happen. We had a freaking wine and cheese for it. Right, I have we had buyers to run hey, through well, that. Rob had a wine and cheese, and he was thinking about the. Office. I already knew that we was going to get accepted, guys. I already knew. <laughs> he right? already knew. But, but guys, look- really quick, Rob, before um, I don't want I don't want to not share this. This is something that Tony is sharing, and it's called Keys to Winning Your Offer. And there's some really good bullet Actually, points. Actually, Rob steal my show. Okay, <laughs> and I kidding. and I want to share it with you guys because. A lot of us are working with first-time home buyers. We're in a very fast market where offers, you're out showing on Saturday, offers are due Tuesday. That doesn't give you a lot of time to really prep your buyers. A lot of buyers do the buyer consultation. They sign our agreement. They're excited because we're looking at homes. But if there's an offer due on Tuesday and they're looking at that purchase agreement for the first time, guess what? They're flipping out. They're worried. They're anxious. They haven't seen the verbiage on the purchase agreement. They don't know. They heard about the contingencies in our buyer presentation, but they don't know now what they mean in this legal verbiage that it's in the purchase agreement. So keys to winning your offer. And I'm going to share a lot of these bullet points that Tony has shared because it's going to tie into just getting them ready. Know your client's maximum budget. Monthly mortgage payment is the key especially if you're submitting a preemptive. Know it, just know if they're, re- if they're really ready to submit a preemptive and what it entails to. 
Do a test run on your buyers on the purchase contract so they know what to expect on a real hot property. Why are we even going through this? Why? Because we want to make sure you know what the 3% deposit is. We want to make sure that you know it needs to be an escrow within 24 hours. We want to make sure that you know that we're removing all your contingencies because you want to let the seller know you're ready to close. We're submitting your proof of funds. We're attaching your pre-approval. We're maybe including a bio. We're including all these things so that at the last minute when I send you the offer, you're not having to review that agreement and you're just signing away on the terms that we're agreeing on, okay? Get to know the listing agent, how many transactions he, she has had done, et cetera. Why is this even important? You want to know who you're working with. Uh, Thomas shared something very important with me, which is connecting. Hey, if the listing agent has a business, a side business of a daycare, cosmetic, spa, whatnot, connect in that sense. Hey, you know what? After this transaction, I'm treating you to a spa day or I'm treating you to something, you know, why not create some icebreakers, create some connection. Or pan out his listing, he double and nine of his deal. So you know exactly who you do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Call the pendings around that listing, number of offers, cash offers, what did they appraise at? Why? Because now you're preparing your, your buyers for appraisal gaps. All the pendings maybe already have their appraisal in. You at least have an idea what that property appraised for and if it's going to close. And it gives you a better gauge on what the gap could be for your buyer if there is going to be a gap. Okay. Prepare them for that appraisal gap. So it's not a shocker. Give them worst case scenarios with your lender. Hey, this comp closed at this price and may come in worst case scenario at this. Are we okay coming in 100,000, 150 higher? Are you prepared to cover that gap if needed? Okay. Do not over promise, always under promise guys. Um, completely review and sign all disclosures reports by the buyers for preemptives, completely review, sign off on them, submit a, com a complete package and also make sure they're understanding what they're signing. Um, you, you got to be able to sell yourself. Why should the listing agent work with you, with you? Uh, I submitted an offer yesterday. I had delivery on the phone with the listing agent three times. We lost this offer, not because of delivery, not because of me, not because it wasn't complete because the, our buyer did not want to go up an extra 10, 15 grand. Now, when it comes to that, it's out of your control, out of your control. but sometimes it's a learning experience for our buyers. Will they make this mistake again? Probably not, mm -hmm. right? Remember, control what you can control. Um, you got to be able to, okay, do it fast, go out of the normal process that the average agents would do and do it better. Do not wait. If it says, oh, offers are due Thursday, get out there sooner than that and review these reports and disclosures, have them ready, signed, so that you're ready to go. And if you're able to submit a preemptive, do it. And if not, you have everything prepped so you're not scrambling the day of offer due date and you're missing things because it's easy to do that. Have your lender call the listing agent. Um, tell the listing agent that a small help from you to do part of his or her job, but be careful. It can be awkward for the listing agent if the listing agent doesn't know what he, she is doing. <laughs> Keep communication, avoiding Avoiding disturb, disturbing is an art of following okay. up, but do not make the listing agent feel annoyed. Keep communication going, but don't be overly annoying with basic, um, is it 1.1? Is it 1.150? Is it 1.2? Those kind of calls can be annoying, like Rob said. You know, be, be courteous. They're probably getting bombarded with tons of calls and text messages. And where's it going? And, you know, do we have a chance? Do we not have a chance? I have, I have one thing to add on that specific point. Yeah. Like if you're going to make that phone call and you're going to try and do the one, one point, know your numbers, right? Know your comps, know the pendings. Cause you don't want to be that agent. That's like, Hey, this one at one, one, like you got one, two, just say, Hey, I know that pending went for one, six. Are you North of one, six? I can get you there. Okay. Right? okay. Now, 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 let, let, let me also explain something really quick, guys, right? Uh, I, I just picked up an, another listing. So I'm, 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 I'm rocking and rolling on the listing side. So I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, 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 feedback coming in, right? Uh, what if I tell you that the listing agents have no fucking idea? I'm, oh, sorry. No FN idea in regards to what the final price is going to be. Yeah. I don't. True. I have no idea. It's they, true. There's no idea, guys. 
you and I are looking at the same data. So my exact conversations with when I sit down with sellers is going to be this. I go, listen, Mr. Customer, I am great at reading data. I am an expert at reading data. I am a nerd. I love reading data. The hard part that I'm having trouble with is the emotional side of, of an offer coming in. Right now, what I'm noticing is that a lot of buyers are making a lot of emotional decision, mm -hmm. right? And they're skyrocketing the prices to things that I don't know where they're going to land. So for us to be conservative, I think that we should maybe uh, at least do our numbers with this number here, because we know that the data is telling us that we can at least get this number and then everything else is going to be gravy. Now, listen, that's how I'm selling it to my, to my sellers, right? Th trust me, guys. I don't, I, I think I'm, I'm not far off from what other listing agents are, are, are how they're explaining it that way, right? They might have say it a little bit differently, but they don't have a magic number as far as like, I, I'm, I can get you this much number. If anyone is saying that right now, as a listing or a buyer agents are lying to you. Yeah. And did you hear Rob? There's no problem with saying, I don't know. Yeah. He said, I don't know. This is what the market is doing. This is the last data we have. This is what everybody is looking at. The driver is going to be the emotion. Buyers are making these decisions based on emotion. Now, 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 if you guys now know that, right? Why are we still asking the questions like, where do you think this number is going to be at? Where do you think it's going to land at? <laughs> I don't freaking know. You know what I mean? I'm going to find out on Tuesday when all you guys send me all your offers in, right? That's when I'm going to find out. But right now I have no idea. Now, guys, I don't consider myself, myself a dumb guy. Right. I, I, I've been in the business now for a couple for 16, 17 years. I think I got something down. Right. So when what, what I do know, though, is that if you guys end up sending me a preemptive offer, that is the only offer that I know. That is the only metric that I know in today's market. If you send me everything becomes a wow number. Right. Everything becomes a wow number if you're the first offer. But if you become the, th the second, the fifth, the tenth offer, you're no longer a wow offer. Right. So you have you have the take the take opportunity of preemptive offers right now. The, the next step that we got to talk about, guys, is how do you guys prep your clients for preemptive offers? Right. Because it's a scary thing. It's scary as all hell. I'll be honest with you guys. Right. So you have to. I, I'm a firm believer of taking liability away from yourself. Mm -hmm. Take full liability away from I don't you have to figure out ways to take the liability off yourself and to make it sound like they're the ones that are making the decisions. OK, because the moment that you start saying, I think we should do this and I think we should do that, it's really easy for you them to say when they lose, well, you told me to do that mm -hmm. and you told me to put this down. Right. So now it becomes a conversation that we want to have together. Listen, Miss Customer, I can only advise you on what to do. But at the end of the day, you're my boss. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're the one that has control of how this situation is going to get played out. Mm -hmm. If it was up to me, Mr. Customer, this is what I'm going to do. But at the end of the day, this is your decision on how we're going to play this out. You want people who are strong preemptive offers. These are people who have money in the bank, right? You want to deal with people who, who have that attitude of winning. A lot of these, uh, my, my Indian peeps, a lot of my tech guys that are around here, they have that mentality to win. That's where they got where they got, right? Play on that psyche. Play on that psyche. Play on, hey, listen, man, we're going to win. So use those keywords. You know what? If we have any chance of winning this, this deal, this is what we need to do. What do you think? Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about this right? So you need to prep your clients to know exactly what they're getting into because a preemptive offer is a really scary shit to do as, as a buyer and as an agent, right? You're throwing an offer out there that's a crazy amount. You have no idea. You can pretty much assume that you're going to have an appraisal gap, right? Can we assume that we're going to have an appraisal gap right now? Oh, yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's the part now is that now you, what you have to do is you've got a, uh, you've got a, um, damn, that was a good point. Hold on, touch up on that right now. So, so, so listen, um, so you have to make sure that the buyer that you have in hand is going to be great enough to end up setting a preemptive offer. Okay. Ho ho really quick, Stephanie, what did you say right now? Yeah, yeah I know a lot of the times why we don't want to send in preemptives if they're not going to accept it is because they're just going to leverage our offer. Okay. Uh, uh, he said, he said, sending a preemptive offer is that is you're going to be able to leverage that offer out together. But the that's go back to the number one. Yes, yes, right? yes. Because your offer is number one. Yes, so, so, to, so here, hold on really quick, hold on really quick. Hold on really quick. If you are the number one, speed to lead, guys, hold on, hold on. Speed to lead is gonna be the first thing. If you can get an offer out. There's a reason why I lagged with, with, with the agent. There's a reason why I lagged. All the other agents. I, exactly. I'm trying to leverage that, that, that offer that he gave me. Listen, my job 
as a listing agent is to bring that number as high as I can. That's my job. That's my job, right? So I'm trying to find, I'm trying to figure out like, holy shit, come on guys, someone give me an offer right now. Give me an offer right now. But what did he just do? He was too quick. He was too quick. That's one thing. But that means that everybody's waiting for the offer due date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't get no offers until the following freaking week. That guy cut me down. He cut me down. Yep. It's sent by me. So that guy cut me down. That guy did not allow me to go shop his, his, his offer around because everybody's focused on sending in the offer on the offer due date when this sent it in an hour, two hours after it was listed. He took all the control and I lagged. I didn't lag. I didn't lag just to lag guys, right? I lagged because it was a purpose. I'm like, come on guys, somebody give me something now. I need to leverage this contract. Somebody call me and just tell me so I can tell them. And that's the perfect example of what all of us agents do. Ah. We wait to the offer due date. Why didn't another agent send it in? It's a beautiful home great location why because there's an offer due date and we're looking at the offer due date and we're stuck in yes. that mentality yes go for it go for it, louis how do you determine a wow offer on a preemptive offer how to offer if it's a great offer that's a great question right that's the part that we're all having trouble in today's market on trying to figure out what a wow number right now now the reason why i'm going to say that's a great question right there louis is because your knowledge of, of that wow, no, uh, your knowledge is the same exact knowledge that I have when you're sending in a wow number because I haven't seen that number. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, I'm the guy that broke the record in that neighborhood at 1580. You know so, the mm -hmm. right, you what? Know the area. yeah, you know the area. So that guy comes in and brought in a higher number at 1850. It blew my, I'm the guy who just broke the record. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be the guy that says, holy shit, somebody broke my record. Holy crap, that guy broke the record. Right. So for me, that was a wow number. So for the listing agent, it was a wow number, but it also has to be a wow number for the seller. Yes. So I'm sure that you went back to the seller. I had to. Yeah. They revisited the numbers and it there was, made sense. There was a logic. We did go down a logic. I'm not going to probably go down that. Right. But there was a logical way of thinking of why the number that he submitted was great. Mm -hmm. And I also go back to oh. one of the much cooler point is for way. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know the number around that area, and you know that when you come in above that number, you you, you in the control. Yeah, you have, you're in the and control. You at have that a point. key point to talk to the listener. You can hey guys, I know that listen, you know, pending at one point six. My offer one point six five. What are you looking for? Yeah. And also let your seller know because in that area there's another active very similar to this one. So now that buyer has a second option. Yep. Hey, Mr. Seller, guess what? Now there's like another active here in your neighborhood. So this buyer that's giving us this well offer may consider that other home. Yeah. I'm going to tell you guys one more story, guys, on my end of why, of how this guy just clowned the shit out of me, right? And, and, and it's embarrassing for me to say this thing, okay? But I'm going to tell you guys a conversation. So what's my job as a listing agent? To get the highest possible number, right? So what about, I go back and I said, hey, listen, man, that's a great number, 1850, but you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. My clients don't want it. You know what? Give me an extra 50K, right? I told him, I go, give me 1.9 and we'll make this happen. We'll wrap it up. We'll be good to go. <laughs> you know what he told me? He goes, Robert, you know what? I'll be honest with you. We're not going to give you anything more than 185, right? That's what he told me. He goes, do you have another offer for him? That's what he told me, <laughs> right? There was no freaking other offer. I couldn't even freaking, I couldn't even get an extra 50K. You have to remember, dude, I, I, I negotiate these contracts 100, 150, like up higher. I couldn't even get an extra 50K from this guy because he knew that he was the only offer that was on the table. So I had to take it. I had to take that 1850 because my customers, my clients were already uh, happy with it. But I'm over here telling my clients, hold on, hold on. Let me see what I can do. Hold on, hold on. I've been in this position before, right? But no, I haven't been in a position like that. You know what I mean? What did you say? You said there was no offer? I just said, hey, listen, man. Then I negotiated the rent back at that point. So I justified it. Say, hey, listen, man, you don't want to give me the 50K? I lost. I lost, guys. I lost, right? I go, hey, listen, you don't want to give me the 50K? Well, then do me a favor. How about we just give them a free 60-day rent back, right? So he was like, go ahead, Rob. Now, you have to remember, how much is rent back? Rent back is like 5K for them. Mm -hmm. So are you going to pay 5K? Are you going to pay 60? Are you going to pay 50K? You're going to pay 5K. I lost. I lost in that negotiation. No, well, we can feel better. One eight, one eight. No, his, I saw him. I talked to the lender. Five grand. They're paying. They're putting down a big fat down payment, right? So, so now, so now, if you look at it from their point of view, 
And if I was a buyer's agent, I said, hey, listen, we're not going to go up 50K. Let's just give them the extra 30 day rent back. If there's a difference between 5,000 or us paying out an extra 50,000. Yeah. What do you want to pay? All right, let's give them the extra 50. Let's give them the extra uh, free rent back. Got the free rent back. Yay. Right? Well, in negotiation, the term that's called a, a flat back, just better alternative negotiation term, right? Yeah. You pay something. Yeah, we trade something. We trade. We traded something for something. Okay, so that's a good one. She just whispered in my ear right now, right? So I'm gonna tell you what happened. So let's play this out now, guys. Right? <laughs> let's play this out. You did, damn, I just keep digging myself so in a hole on offer, this one. So the offer <laughs> just, date, just keep digging guys, myself in a hole, back. So let, let me, because Rob misses like the timeline. So the offer due date was Tuesday. Tuesday. Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday was the offer due date, right? So he accepted the preemptive on Friday. Friday. Okay. So now you could. I, I, I'm just apparently, we forgot. We forgot you. to change the, the the house from active to pending. Oh, shit. So but, check this out. So check but, this out. So check this out. We forgot. Well, we did. We did. We can't. We can't. Right now, at this point, we're pending. Right. So we we forgot to change it from active to pending. So that means that I was getting offers that were still coming in. Right. Oh, so I had yes. a. Uh, no, no, I got offers and calls. Yeah, and calls. I got offers and calls right coming in. And first off, the offer was was better than the offer that we got in contract. Now we're better than the other offers that are coming in, right? But but what I what I want you guys to understand is well, actually, I'm sorry, I only got one offer coming in because he was my boy. I told him to send in a preemptive offer. He just sent it in late, right? But what I wanted to let you guys know is everybody's still waiting for the for the for the offer due date to come, right? And then submitted all their all their all their offers at that point. So what does that tell me? that everybody waited for the last freaking minute to send in their offers on Tuesday at 12 o'clock when the offers were due, when you already had this one guy, this outlier, this dark horse guy who comes in out of nowhere, right? Gives me his offer and he's accepted. These, all, these guys all think that they're getting the house, right? And in reality, there was this one guy who decided to think outside the box, control what he could control and made it happen, right? So my challenge to you guys, this is my challenge to you guys, is let's try something out. Let's try something new out, okay? This is for my Itzels, my Alfredos, my, my, uh, my Zaharas, all my senior agents, my junior agents, my team specialists. I'm putting out something out there. I'm challenging you guys that speed to lead or speed to the house is going to be quick and speed to the uh, uh, an offer to the agent is going to be quick as well. Let's just try that out, right? So he got the off market and he got the right, he knew the right one was going to get no, no, no. He, much, right? he had an alert. He must have had an alert to have my house come up because mm -hmm. that guy was he's literally. Probably, he's probably canvassing that neighborhood for his clients. Yeah. And Some, he's keeping an eye on it. Somehow he figured it out that the, the house came on the market an hour later. Our super boxes are ringing. And actually, he on Calendly, it we shows do, up. We do the coming soon, too. Yeah. The Calendly. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but the coming soon. On the yeah, Calendly, he was on there. One eight. Yeah, coming. Yeah, so we still, we still won. We still got a great offer, guys. Right. But I would have had a lot more leverage. If five offers came in on a Tuesday and they were all, and I had that 185 and 18, I could have used the other eight. I, I wouldn't have been scared to lose that 185, right? I, I would have, I would have blamed, I would put the risk on my clients to say, hey, listen, guys, if you want to risk it, let's risk it. We have, we have five other, uh, five other offers in hand, right? What's another extra 50 grand? Let's try, right? It's a lot easier for me to negotiate the price higher because I have more offers in hand. I, I'm not scared about losing an offer. How many offers are you? And now I, I ended up getting a total of five of them, but they were all somewhere in the ballpark of one eight. And I guarantee you, if I had those five on Monday, I would have gone that hot, that price up higher than one nine. I guarantee you, because at that point, the monkey's off my back. I can lose a one eight five and still go for a one eight and justify it and still justify that the clients made that decision because they will. I take liability as much as I can off of me. Right. Hey, listen, guys, if you guys want to do this, but I think we have a pretty good chance. Well, listen, guys, it's your thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to go up, I think we should try it. But again, this is going to be a family decision. Robert, let's do it. Are you sure? Yeah, let's do it. Great, let's do it, right? So there's ways to take liability off yourself that even though I'm kind of directing the, the show, there's ways for me to push this number up as high as I can with the listing agreement. But when you have no offers in hand, there's no way to negotiate these contracts, guys, right? There's nothing. So I'm, my challenge to you guys is just, let's, let's, let's think about doing more preemptive offers, right? Let's start sending in a lot more stronger offers, okay? Let's start prepping our clients correctly the way that they need to be uh, uh, explained in regards to a preemptive offer. And then I want some feedback from you guys. I want to know what you guys think.